till now we talked about what is there and uh, at least how do we see what is there or, or giving some snapshots because it's a huge area with a lot of things happening so we might, we might not be able to touch everything there what is happening now we we had the let's say the intention to look a bit ahead what is coming at least from that perspective that how we how we should prepare ourselves for that the best of course we don't know actually what is going to happen but we have some guesses and let's say what, let's see what is that hype it's a hype a big big hype and everybody tries to catch that train that train is now speeding like hell and everybody tries to be on that train so all those giants or not only the giants wants to join somehow and get a part of that of course OpenAI was the first mover in that or at least the first mover on the public of course so now they have that position and all the others just challengers even Google the biggest one is still a challenger now I could give Microsoft but you know the relation to this view but still okay and some other interesting uh, parts I put here Oh, I do just to show oh, you the little thing. I don't know. Okay, so thank you for putting up my current favorite project. So I believe you are here because you find this uh, technology interesting and uh, very useful in the future and, uh, and a very important one. So, what is Open Assistant? It, this is a team which is training an open source uh, language model just like ChatGPT. And uh, they are collecting uh, the training set, this, these human interactions, which are uh, used to fine train the language models, uh, by uh, basically using volunteer, vol volunteers like you. And uh, why is it important? Uh, they are going to release their first uh, model in, uh, in a few months, probably in two months. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so they are going to release their first model in, in a few months. And uh, they are still collecting data. Uh, so it is very important to increase this uh, data set as large as we can. So if you have already read the back of the Shampoo Battle several mm -hmm. times, then please consider helping uh, us collecting data. Uh, it is already a large data set. However, the Hungarian part is still small. And uh, it half, of that, half of that part comes from you. Yes, and <laughs> half of them is coming. No, I'm not from joking. <laughs> yeah. So it would be really nice to have uh, some, uh, some diversity. Anyway, please consider having. Honestly, it. you don't want that model to look like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For the sake of Hungarian NLP, let's override <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this stuff. <laughs> For any speakers of smaller languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, this open source model will have uh, huge financial implications. Uh, this is going to be the next big thing, or the basis of the next big thing, because the, dust, the, uh, the data set will be released, and the next commercial model will be probably trained also on this data set, which will make it better. Also, open, uh, open. Uh, model can be used by a company which don't want to share its uh, critical business information with OpenAI, like the CEO, CEO's personal <laughs> uh, or something. Yeah, something. Yeah. So please consider helping them to help yourself. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Gerger. Uh, so. Beside the giants, as Gabriel mentioned, uh, there are the newcomers uh, being more open, like OpenAI, because it's only the name open, otherwise it's not really open on what they are doing. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to mention before we, uh, again we came to the to the stage that <laughs> there are some others also not only from the Western uh, countries. I mean, uh, I have one eye on on Asia as well because they are also working on those things. And interestingly, even uh, players who might not consider them, I always say that NVIDIA is rather a tech demonstrator than, than really a player here, but still, you know, one of the biggest models there. So, yeah, okay. And 
metal I would mention that is a famous thing that you have heard about the story that they Lama, Lama they opened Lama saying it's open source for non-commercial use which is a message not to us it's a message to them guys if you don't let us to the table we destroy the table want it or not so it's a big big board it's not a game it's rather a board now what is what is coming ahead of us I mean Ahead. Okay, one thing to mention, we were talking about text, language, mostly, but these models now are moving to new, new dimensions, being multimodal, and uh, they, it started to, to show the size that they can handle quite well many other modalities, like pictures, for example. This is from this paper, which is Microsoft, I don't know, and uh, the model of Cosmos, Cosmos 1. Look at this. Yeah. It's substantially similar to GPT-4, I think. Uh, the data set was a bit different, I think, for sure. Maybe the structure and the audio oh. are similar. But look at this one. This is my favorite. This is an IQ test. It's part of an IQ test, and it's all well. Now, I talk about intelligence is what IQ tests measure, as the psychologists say. So. Whether it's intelligence, what is intelligence, we don't know, but at least if these models start to excel on this one, then what should we say? Are those intelligent or not? And now I'm in, the, I'm in the trouble, because when we go for this business training, let's say, te teaching or talking about AI, a business use of AI, whatever, we have a very good starting point. We go to the stage. Guys, first thing we need to tell to you, it's artificial, but not intelligent. And then it's a good start to talk about. What should I say now? Uh, I'm not sure I'm intelligent, <laughs> guys. I don't know what is this, but uh, who knows. So anyhow, this multimodality leads to, again, phi. Maybe the next uh, reading seminar will be about this. I don't know. It could be. One more uh, important thing. The whole ecosystem now, uh, let's say, on fire. And everybody starts to build something new. Maybe you have heard about the plugins of OpenAI. Open what miracle we can do with those plugins and building those chains and, and putting things together from this Lego. It's unbelievable. But don't think that OpenAI is the only one doing that. Google is preparing. They are on the start line now. <coughs> Whenever Bart or the other model will be good enough to, to do with that, they have already started to build that ecosystem around them, like workspace. Maybe you have heard about the news that they put everything into the workspace. I mean, Google Meet will include automatically uh, a transcription of a meeting which goes to, I don't know, what kind of uh, summarization. summarization and then a memo and whatever, which is also based on the same logic like, uh, like GPT and OpenAI and they did that. So the, the ecosystem will look completely different in most probably in one year from now than it is now. One interesting thing I wanted to show you because that was my, let's say, uh, boosting point. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm not going that way. It's much too rocky. This way is much easier. What makes you think there are settlements over there? Don't get technical with me. Don't get technical in me. Uh, Zegi, uh, one, one robot says to the other one, that don't technical with me, don't get technical with me. When I saw this movie first, okay, I was a kid at that time, it was uh, from the Star Wars, the, the first one, the new book, uh, which was uh, released in uh, 1977 or something, in, in America at least, and 79 in, in Hungary, I think. Uh, I was thinking about that, what a stupidity is this? Two robots speaking to each other in a human language. Why would they do? It's just uh, you know losing the information in the in the translation. So what's the point of that? It's Lucas is genius, but this this point is really come on why? And then came the. It seems now that he was right. Now it seems that this our language, the human language, is the glue between the things. Just think about those plugins. 
these language models are the glue. We put things here and there, but somehow that, that makes it something uh, that's a useful or sensible. So now it seems that we, the robots, try, it seems that they will speak to each other in a human language. So it was really uh, amazing for, uh, for me. But, but it's actually important because it's important for us. Yes, we have a lot of that for them to be important also. Yeah. Together. But I never told that it will come true, come on, that uh, it will happen like that. One more thing to mention, I would really recommend you, I would recommend to you to, to read this paper. Have you seen that? Sparks of Artificial Intelligence. I really like that paper. A lot of negative comments were there about that, that paper saying that it's, let's say, it's, it's a hype and whatever. I really like, like the tone of this paper because they have a lot of disclaimers saying that we don't say that it is. We just put the question whether are we able to sense the point where it will become intelligent? Do we know what does it mean? Do we know how we measure that? And then this, in this paper, they said that they selected one definition of, of intelligence and they measured the mo model against that. And really interesting things came out. For example, uh, it was again a good example uh, for me to show that it's some things suspicious now. And they told to the model GPT-4 that because they played in GPT-4, non-multimodal non version of GPT-4, they told to the model that we have the following items, a book, nine eggs, one laptop, uh, one bottle, this plastic bottle, and one nail. Put them into a pile upon each other. How would you do that physically? physically. How would you do that if you need to put them on each other? And the model, at once, without any reasoning or something, thought that, okay, lay first the book, put the eight eggs in a three times three matrix on them, in brackets assuming that they are the same size, approximately the same size, then carefully put the laptop on top of them, not breaking the, the eggs, then put the bottle on top of the, on top of the laptop, make sure that you, you tighten uh, the bottle and it will not harm the, the laptop and put the nail with the head down on top of the bottle. Uh, for me, it, it, it is somewhere on the edge of, of, of the human reasoning. The, this about physical objects. Uh, about physical objects, yes. yes. For a language model. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the CEO of the the, the open AI said that uh, said that if you would see uh, GPT four in a science fiction uh, movie as a uh, AGI, yeah, yeah. he would be really disappointed. So it's I think everything about the definition. Of definition. The AGI. That's why these guys I really appreciate them because they <coughs> gave a definition. I mean, they, they didn't give, they selected the definition, which was made by a psychologist in some conference or something, and saying that compared to that, we measure like this and this and this and this. And saying, I don't know what is intelligence, but if we treat that is intelligence, then that's the performance of the model. But anyhow, uh, my other favorite, Yuval uh, Harari, who is a Jewish uh, uh, historian, Here's a couple of words about that which I really like, saying that language is the cooperating system of the human culture, which is an interesting approach, saying that yeah, that's the glue which connects each other. What if the, the, the machine is AI ceasing to master the key to that cooperating system? Then what we do? What we do with that? What that we do with us or with, with the culture around us? How will it change? So he just said that, that we could really be we need to go with open eye on that, that we really follow what is happening, which is really, really hard because it's happening so fast. Really hard to, to really be on the train and really know what is happening there. But anyhow, what, whatever will be the outcome of that, this extinction that already <laughs> begun. GPT came, some copywriters Okay, sorry for about that. But who is able to get this new new job, like being a prompt engineer, <laughs> really survive. So that, that's my last slide. I really hope that you you enjoy that. It was less professional, but maybe more entertaining a bit. And I really hope that you you really inspired by this to, to deal with this topic more. And I'm quite sure that we will meet 
around this topic, if not prompt engineering, something similar or something coming next upon that. So thank you for your attention. If you have more questions, just put it now, or we can discuss the, in the meeting later on. I could ask one question still before that. that uh, do you know any aspect of debugging uh, with the chat GPT? Like, it's basically, you need to know what kind of permissions you are giving to the, to the algorithms. And uh, if it could go in a way that, okay, use VS Code for me, debug this code based on this uh, output. I don't know. My neural network is not uh, consistent with the loss function. So please. Uh, do a correction on this one. To be honest, I have no experience on doing that. Tried, what I tried is that I, whenever GPT-4 came out, I copied uh, a thing that we kind of forgot to mention. There is a thing called LangChain, which is again an open source library I highly recommend to look into. Basically, how to connect together different you just uh, kept it for the next APIs or any kind of uh, language models with APIs and so on. So I copied the short tutorial of LangChain. I put it into GPT-4 and told, like, please write me an app in Qt uh, that runs on my machine and talks to yourself via this API. Mm -hmm. And then it created something. It first didn't run. And what I did is just I literally copied the first exception that came up. I put it into the next, like, uh, they can just hit enter. And I, oh, sorry, I have to rewrite the script. Blah, 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 blah. And after two, three rewrites, the whole thing ran. And I was able to chat with uh, GPT via a window that was on my, my local desktop. So that's that's a good strategy, just put in the exception. Yeah. And that's it. Long chain is an open source version of this. Typically, okay. Did you say long chain? Long chain. It's an open source chain. OK, it's not completely true, but you can do quite similar things like you would be able to do with the plugins, but you are not tied to this environment. Uh, now, thank you. So, thank you again. Take some beers. Eat and drink everything you have left. We can take some questions and then pop up. The board, the 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 Csak olyan is van, hogy nagyon sokkal van adok, és akkor van egy képviselőjük, és adok kell meg előbb, hogy kellene az az volt, hogy a, a falu is az ott is Igen, Jaj, ez szuper bürokratikus, hogy so anyone who feels a mammalian slash wants to work in prompt engineering, we are hiring. I don't have just some of us. That's okay. It's not, it's not necessary. Part, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, <laughs> focus on the first part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so just contact us, please.